Hey, welcome to Stonewater Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy. I have the opportunity to serve as a lead pastor here at Stonewater, and we are so excited that we're all gathering today online. That's right. I'm Pastor Joey White, and uh, we've been at this for almost 15 years now, and we are so excited to have church online today. Now, every time we gather together, we expect God to do big things. So what are we asking people to do today, Jeremy? Yeah, so today we're asking you just to prepare yourself for God to work in your life. Uh, so you're going to hear uh, times of music uh, where we're singing songs. There's going to be times that, uh, that, that we listen to stories of what God is doing. There's going to be a message. And on every one of these acts of worship, we just ask you to respond to God. So, so whatever it is that God is speaking to you about, whatever it is that you feel maybe prompted or, or maybe want to, uh, you, you just feel like there's something inside you, you just feel like I need to do, then, then we just ask for you just to respond to God today and expect God work. Every time we gather together, we expect to hear from God and we expect God to work in our lives. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if we're here at a church building or we're inside somebody's house or out, uh, out in the country. No matter where you're watching, God wants to speak to you today. So be ready for that. Now, the second thing you can do is let us know that you're here. Check in and maybe in the comment section you say, hey, uh, we're checking in. We're here today or hey, we're watching online uh, from, our, from our couch uh, or better yet, what if you were going to take a selfie hey. and post it online? Oh, hey, look at this. Right hey, right cheese ball. <laughs> All right. So post that so that we know that you guys are here and, uh, and we know that God's doing big things in your life. So guys, uh, before we begin our service, we want to pray and mm -hmm. we want to invite God to come and truly meet with us here to bring life change. Now, as we pray, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read a passage of scripture directly out of the Bible. This is a prayer from the Apostle Paul. So if you would join with me, let's just bow our heads and let's pray this prayer from Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Let's pray. Dear God, hear our prayer today, just like the Apostle Paul prayed for his church. Lord, we pray this for our church today. In Philippians 1, 9 through 11, it says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want, to under, I want you to understand what really matters, so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, in the Bible, it says, uh, the psalmist says, uh, without vision, people perish. All of us need to have vision. We need to be able to see what God is doing. We need to be able to see uh, what's next. Uh, this morning, I want to share just a little bit of vision, a little bit of uh, painting a picture of what could be for us as a church and us as a church family. At Stonewater, we refer to ourselves as, as a family. So I want to paint a picture on, on what could be for our family uh, during, during this time. And, it, and it's really three challenges. I have three challenges. Uh, or, or, but before I get to those, like, we all have to admit that we're living in a very interesting time. There's not been anything like this that, that any of us experience. There's been things that have been similar uh, 9-11, uh, some of us were, were here during 9-11, uh, similar, but, but not the same. Y2K, remember Y2K? It, it was similar, but, but, but not, the, not the same. Uh, my parents told me about the gas shortages in the 70s. Again, similar, but not the same. Um, we, we've been through different wars, and I've had people this week that have talked to me about what it was like during World War II, and similar, but not the same. These are these are times that are like outside of the lines. Like none of us have ever experienced uh, times like this before. And, and one of the things that God's been laying on my heart is, is this. Um, there are very few opportunities that we have to join God in doing something great than, than times of crisis. Like when the world goes through times of crisis, church, church family, we have an opportunity to join God in his work, and, and it's a great work. It's a work of ministry. It's a work of hope. It's a work of, of purpose. 
So, so with that in mind, I have three challenges for us. The first one is this, is for us as a church family to stay connected. Like we need to stay connected during this time. Gathering today online, it's a great way for us to stay connected. This, this past week, we've had people gather on Facebook and, and participate. Now, I'm not using the word watch. I'm, I'm, I'm using the word participate because every time we gather, every time we, uh, uh, we're, we're engaged in, in seeing Facebook or Instagram or uh, YouTube, like I encourage you to make a comment. I encourage you to engage and let's stay connected. One of the things that I was uh, proud about this past week was um, at every one of our church family, every one of our members in our church got a phone call this week. Like we just called just to check in on you guys. There's a, there's a team of people that uh, they just called and I asked them to do that just to check in, just so that we can stay connected. And I, I just want to challenge you. Let's stay connected during this time. Um, Stonewater Church Online is the best place that we can stay connected. If you want to serve or help during this time, go to stonewaterchurch.com and there's a button there that you can let us know and, and we, will, we will help you find a way to, to serve others during this time. If you need help, like if you need help, you can go to Stonewater Church Online and, and click a button there that says, I need help. And we will, within 24 hours, 48 at the most, we're going to follow up with you and we're going to make sure that you receive help. So church, we've got to stay connected. So we stay connected online. I also want to encourage you to stay connected in groups. Uh, many of us are, are in groups and we want everybody in our church to be in a group. And if you're comfortable meeting, great. If not, at least text your group, call your group. Uh, email your group. Stay in contact with your group. We're a family, and in times like this, we have to stay together. You know, the Bible refers to us as the body of Christ, and as the body of Christ, we have to stay connected to each other. So that, that's our first challenge, is to stay connected. The, first challenge, the second challenge is this, is that during this time, I want to challenge you to be generous. Like, let's be a generous church. Um, during the Great Depression, the churches that came out of the Great Depression stronger and that had the most impact on people were the churches that were the most generous. Church, let's be a generous church during this time. I've loved the outpouring this past week of people just saying, hey, I want to help. There was a guy that showed up with, with gift cards this week and just started giving out gift cards that, that we could give to other people in need. And that gave us the idea of, hey, we should, we should take up gift cards and, and, and go buy things for, for people in need. And, and what are other ways that, that we can serve people in need? We know during this time, um, people are going to need, many of you are going to uh, just be in need. And, and I, I just want to encourage you, if, if you're in need, let us know. But, but if you have an abundance and, and that, that you could be generous with. We want to challenge you to be generous. You know, the, since we're doing church differently, we're, we're not having Sunday morning ministries. We're all gathering online. We as a church are going to do this. We're going to um, take and, and divert some funds in order to help people at every one of our communities. Now, when I say funds, I'm talking like $250,000 that we set aside just to pour into the communities, to pour into people that are in need. So if you get laid off, if you need groceries, if you need help with your electric bill, let us know because we want to help you generously. And, and don't be too prideful to receive the generous blessing of God. So we're going to stay connected. We're going to be generous. And the last one is this, is that we're going to offer hope. See, during a time like this, this is a great time for us to offer hope. The, the world is hopeless. The world is fearful. The world has all kinds of, of things that, that they're worried about and fearful of right now. And, and guess what, believers, followers of Christ? We have hope in Jesus. And I want to challenge you to share with others the hope that you have in Jesus. Text hopeful text to your friends. Put, put posts on social media that point back to the hope of Christ. Be calm when everybody's fearful. And when they're asking you, hey, how, how are you so calm? Take it back to Jesus. Let's be hopeful in a time when the world is hopeless. And let's point people 
to Jesus. Church, this is how we're going to stay connected. This is how we're going to accomplish something great for the Lord during this time, that we would stay connected, that we would be generous, and that we would offer hope. Now, let's pray. Let's pray for our times. Let's pray for our people. And uh, let's pray for our world at this time. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, we come to you this morning. And Lord, we just ask for you to work. Lord, we praise you that you're a God that we can go to. Lord, we praise you that you're a God that's personal. Lord, we praise you that you're a God that's in control. Lord, you're not surprised by anything that any of us are dealing with. And God, I just pray that, uh, Father, you use us as a church family to bring hope. Father, you help us to connect to those that are disconnected. Father, the the impossible problem is is just that, that that we want to connect to those that that are disconnected. And and the world that says to disconnect, Lord, we want to connect. And, And Lord, help us to connect. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for healing, Lord, and protection. And Lord, for you to bring an end to this coronavirus. Father, we ask now that, Lord, you speak to us as we continue in worship and song and story and message. And Lord, you work today in us. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeremy. You know, all of us during this crisis, we have emotions, emotions of fear, anxiety, uh, maybe even joy, like we're able to spend way more time with our family than any, t- any other time. And so, but all of us have, have experienced some type of emotion along the way. But I just want to reassure you that God knows you that God is with you. He's never going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Let me read you this psalm in Psalm 139. It says this, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know, when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. So even though we're going through this crisis, we, we must understand that God is with us. So guys, we've heard a lot of stories this week of, of, of terrible tragedy, loss, hurt, pain. But we want to be reminded of these God stories, of stories of God coming in and knowing us and laying his hand on us and doing things that only he can do. I want to introduce you to our pastors. These guys represent all of our campuses and ministries that we have here at the church. And I want to begin with Pastor Philip. He is our campus pastor over our Glen Rose campus. And so, Philip, tell us some God stories. Tell us some things that God has been doing in the midst of this crisis. Yeah, as, as you were saying, there's just been a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. There's loss of control. We don't know, you know, everything's up in the air. And so just seeing our, our teams, our pastors, our people, uh, just minister to people well, encourage them, uh, pray for them. Just a lot of, of that coming back out of, uh, out of the, the church family of just, I don't know what's going to happen and, and how are we going to pay our bills and what's going to happen here and there. And, and so we've been speaking directly into that fear spiritually. And uh, just a cool thing that happened this week, a, a lady that was dealing with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety was ministered to by somebody in our church. And through that, um, uh, they just asked the question, hey, where are you with Jesus? And, uh, and through that, was able to share the gospel and, and really encourage this young lady. And she gave her life to the Lord through this. And wow. so, yeah, it was just a really, really cool story. And I, I expect to see so many more opportunities for us as a church, especially uh, throughout all of our campuses, to just minister to people in a, in a prayerful, spiritual way and have great opportunities to share the gospel. I love it. Anytime we hear crisis, we must think Christ. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what you guys did. So praise the Lord. This is David Raybuck. He's our campus pastor in Cleburne. And so David, tell us a little bit about some God stories that are happening in Cleburne right now. Yeah, I've been so encouraged this week to see the unity that's happening between the city government and pastors and churches and just the community as a whole. On on Monday, the mayor of Cleburne had a conference call with a lot of pastors around the city of Cleburne. 
And there was a lot of idea sharing and a lot of collaboration and just the general idea that we're, we're all trying to accomplish the same goal of reaching people with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ and to help the community in this time of need. So, you know, the enemy is, is wanting to cause a lot of division and fear during this time, but I think it's backfiring. I think instead we're seeing a lot more unity, and I believe it might even lead to full-blown revival. Wow, that's what we've been praying for, and, and that's just like Jesus. Anytime there's, there's pandemonia crisis, like God just comes in and takes something that's really bad and turns into something good. Hey, praise God for what he's doing there. This is Michael Carter. He's our campus pastor in Toller. Uh, Michael, tell us what the Toller campus is doing. We've been running hard trying to just get everyone together to figure out what to do, and honestly, I was going, what are we going to do? And then God just started bringing things. One of the things that just happened was we had the Toller Elementary came to us and said that they were needing to feed 300 kids a week for the next two weeks just because all of the food is, is disappearing. And so that's something that we get to do wow. is get to feed all those kids. kids. Yeah, 300 Man. for Hallelujah. two weeks. And so what it's just blessing. really a way to get to, to love people. Yeah, and, that's and what I'm we want really to do. really excited to be part of it. Hallelujah. I want to introduce you to Ty Dunn. He is our director uh, over our helps ministry here in Granbury. And uh, Ty, I know y'all have uh, been inundated with a lot of calls, a lot of people reaching out to us. But what are ways that we've helped this week? Man, so first I just want to say it's, it seems like any time our community is hurting, um, our church family really steps up, and, and that's so encouraging to see, and it's no different right now. We've had a lot of people step up, and they're calling in. Um, through our helps ministry, we've walked with, oh, about 20 families um, while they're struggling financially or they're needing food or things like that. We've been able to walk with them like that, and then even tomorrow, we have a group from 10 to 3 that's going to be here um, just to pray with you, and uh, if you want to give us a gift card so that we can go help these families that can't get out and go buy some food. Hey, you can throw it out the window at us. It doesn't matter, but we're going to be a, up front tomorrow from 10 to 3, so um, it's something that we can do just to keep helping. Awesome, awesome. So what, what are some of the big needs that people are having? What are you seeing? Uh, right now, really, the big three needs um, are we, uh, as jobs are getting shut down or some people are getting let go, there's a lot of financial need. Um, people, Some people are running out of food. If you go to Walmart, there's really not a whole lot on the shelves right now. And then for those that still can go to work, they need fuel. They need gas. And so those are our big three yeah. needs right now. And Ty, uh, you're speaking on behalf of all of our campuses, but uh, what are ways that people can reach out to us and let us know that they actually have a need and, and how can we meet that need? What, what do they do to reach out to us? Yes, sir. Hey, it's really easy. And no, um, just right now, we want to help. So when you uh, reach out, that, that makes us happy. <laughs> it's something that we want to do. Um, but number one, the, the easiest thing to do is just go to stonewaterchurch.com. Um, you'll see a video, and then just underneath that on the left side, there's a form. It's got five answers. Uh, you fill that out, and then we'll reach out to you as soon as we can. Our turnaround time is really quick, um, and we can get in contact with you and see how we can help. And then the second way to, to reach out to us is just to call the church, and that number is 817-579-9175. And just call us, and uh, we'll, we'll get back with you. We'll uh, answer and talk to you right there and see what we can do. Love it. Hey, guys, let's continue to just share the love of Jesus in our communities, and let's expect great God stories to come out of this even more. Pastor David, would you pray for us and for our communities for God to just continue to, to move in our midst? Yes, I will. Let's pray. Father, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And we know, Lord, we believe that you are a God of power. You are a God of love. You're a God of protection. You're a God of healing. And Lord, you know our hearts. You know right now what's going on more than anybody. You know the fear that's going on, Lord. You know, you know the schemes of the devil. You know he's trying to sow division. He's trying to cause fear. Lord, just make that backfire on him to where every time he tries to do that, instead it just causes more unity, more courage, more hope, more encouragement. And Lord, we pray for full, full revival to come out of this. As people realize that they need something, Lord, as people are pushed outside of their comfort zone, may they come to you. May they reach out possibly in desperation to you. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for being a, a, a provider, Lord. Provide for our financial needs. Provide for our need to eat, Lord. Provide for everything we need, Lord. We know you do that. We trust you. 
And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right. Hey, so uh, you may not have the coronavirus. Uh, I haven't talked to anybody yet who's got the coronavirus. So you may not have the coronavirus. But one thing I do know about you and about me is uh, we all have a coronavirus story already. And uh, so, uh, so, so uh, I want you to do this. You're, uh, you're, why, you're participating on- online at home. So, so do this. Look at, look at somebody and shake your head if you've got a coronavirus story, like, like we all do. And, and most of our coronavirus stories are, are this, is that, uh, is that we've, we've either missed something or we missed out on something or like, like, the, like there's some kind of emotion that's stirred up within us. Uh, because of the coronavirus. So, uh, so my corona, vir- by the way, um, anytime I, I think my corona, uh, like, y'all remember that song, My Sharona? Like, I just got that in my head. I've been singing My Corona all week this week, and I said it out loud at home, and Misty was like, oh my gosh, I've been singing the same thing. So, hey, it's our thing, My Corona. All right, so here's My Corona story. So my corona story is this, is, is it started a couple of weeks ago. We had to we had to cancel our Israel trip. Israel wasn't allowing people into into the country, and a friend of mine got stuck, and and they were not allowed in. And we were planning to go to Israel in June, and we're like, oh no, we, we're going to have to cancel. So so we canceled our Israel trip. So we missed out on Israel, and then and then right after that, a few days later. We missed out on the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. My kids have been working with animals all year. We were going to show Bo the Angus and Mac the uh, Charlet Steer. And, and neither one of those guys got to be showed at Houston. And my kids were disappointed and I was disappointed. And we, we just missed out on that. And then my kids, speaking to my kids, my kids missed out on school. And they were excited about this at first because, hey, school's out, extended spring break. Uh, then it was, hey, we may, we may actually be out all year. And, and, and at first they, they were excited because, hey, we're out of school. But then the reality of being out of school kind of suck in is they, they miss their friends. And they're not getting to hang out with, with, with all their friends. And they're not getting to participate in all the extracurricular activities. And, and even though school is school, there's all these fun elements of school that they're missing out on. And then the question of, hey, how about prom? Is there going to be a prom? Uh, we may miss out on prom. We may miss that. So, so there are things that we're missing. And then this week, this week, uh, this week has been a week of, of misses and, and a week of postponements and a week of, uh, I started using funny words. I was like, I told the team, I said, hey, y'all use funny words just to say, hey, uh, man camp has been exploded or erased or, or wiped off the map or uh, like, let, let's kind of make it, it light because a lot of the things, ministries, things that we're planning, um, we're not able to do or to do the same way. Uh, so, so we miss out on or, or plans change. And, and so, so, so that's kind of my, my Corona story, my Corona, that's my Corona story. What's your, what's your Corona story? Like, like what, what is it that you missed out on? What is it that that you wished you would have done, and 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 so so here's what happens with our Corona stories. As as with with our Corona stories, it, yours probably like mine. It stirs up emotions. There, there's all these different emotions that are stirred up because. Uh, because we missed out on something or because something was postponed or, or, or we didn't get to, to do. Like, like our plans changed. And, and because of that, like, like it stirs up emotions. Things didn't go the, the way I planned it. And I don't know if there's any control freaks out there, but, but, but when things don't go as we plan, there's often emotions. And, and, and here's what happens. Here's what we do with our emotions a lot of times. Uh, we bottle we bottle up these emotions. So, so maybe you've got the emotion of fear that's happening right now. And, and maybe you even, uh, like you got so bold to voice, hey, I'm a little scared or I'm a little fearful. And, and maybe somebody shut you down quickly. They're like, what are you scared about? And, and you, you, instead of like sharing that fear, sharing that emotion, you, you kind of just retreated and you just took that, took that emotion and you, uh, you just placed it. And you bottled it up. Or, or maybe, maybe yours was, was anger. And, uh, and, and you, you, th- there's this anger that's inside because you didn't get what you wanted. Um, like you, you expected to be working this week and you're not working. 
and you don't know if you're going to work next week. And, and there's this fear, but then there's also this anger. And, and even it, sometimes when we voice it, people, people say, hey, you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't be angry. I mean, it's, we're, not, we're not in China right now. We're not in Italy. Uh, you, you shouldn't be angry. So, so a lot of times when we, we, we take these emotions and we just bottle them up in, inside. We, we do it with all emotions. Maybe you're experiencing sorrow right now. Or, uh, or, or loss. And it could be, it could be corona related. It could be just related to life. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, lost, his, um, lost his mother last week. Uh, she passed away. And I know that's like an emotion that, that he's dealing with. Or, or maybe it's frustration. You know, my daughter's been experiencing frustration this week because my wife won't let her out of the house to go hang out and do the fun things that she normally does. So, so we take that and we bottle it up or, or maybe just being overwhelmed. Now, now when we, we take these emotions and when we, we bottle them up, there's, there's one of two things that's going to happen. Okay, there's a couple of things. Now, now, when we bottle up these emotions, we put them in here and, and put the lid on it and uh, life happens and, and we start to get shooken up. And, and one of two things. Number one, we, we implode. Implode. Here, here's, a, here's an example of an implosion. Check out this, this example of an implosion. Look at this. There's a building that's imploding. When something is implodes, it, there's, it's like it's breaking down from the inside and, and it's just crumbling. It's being crushed. And, and that's, how, that's how some of you may be feeling today. That it, you just feel crushed, like everything inside of you is just crushing in on you, life and, and everything. It seems like it's just crumbling. And, and maybe that's put you in a state of depression. It's, it's put you like where you're just paralyzed. And sometimes we, we implode. Other times, though, we do the opposite. We explode. And uh, I, uh, I, 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 Clayton Lowell, he's our, he's our student pastor here, a student ministry called Elevate. And Clayton's like my over-the-top guy. He's my go-to guy. And so I gave Clayton, um, I said, Clayton, go, go, go demonstrate explosion. So, uh, so, so here's Clayton's demonstration of explosion. Let's watch this. Here he is with the Coke bottle. I think he put some Mentos in there, shaking it up. Booyah! Oh, that's just awesome. Let's, let's watch that one more time. Let's watch that one more time. So, so if you'll put Mentos in a Coke bottle, kids, at home with your mom and dad's permission, throw it and run, run. It'll explode. It's awesome. It's awesome. But here, here's, here's what I want to say. Some of us, though, that represents our life. Like we stuff our emotions down inside, and then all of a sudden, like it's, it's, it's as much as we can stand, and we just explode, and we explode all over others. We explode all over. All over. Usually, it's those people that are closest to us, and, and, and how do you know if you're an exploder is, is if people start avoiding you because they're like, ah, I don't want to be around that person. Like, praise God for social distancing. I don't have to be around the exploder in, anymore. So, so, so these are two ways that we, that we deal with, with these emotions. Well, this morning, I, I want us, we're, gonna, we're continuing with our series that, that we've been in. We've been in as a church a series uh, called uh, Psalms, and uh, we're, we're walking through and looking at different Psalms. And, and this morning, we're going to look at Psalm 13. And our big idea is this, is that God can handle it. God can handle it. Everybody, everybody repeat after me, God can handle it. All right, you on the couch at home, repeat after that, God can handle it. All right, so we're all on the same page. God can handle it. God can handle our, our emotions. We're going to be in Psalm 13. And in here in Psalm 13, David gives us an example of how to walk through disappointment or frustration or anger or even grief. And if you think about it, that's what we're doing. We're grieving, and you may not even thought about it this way, but we're grieving over things that we missed out on. We're grieving over our plans that are changed. We're grieving over uncertainty about tomorrow. And, and in here, David David is voicing, he's, he's given us a model of how to grieve or, or, uh, or how to, I'm going to use a word that may not be in your vocabulary, how to lament, lament. Is, is that word in your vocabulary? Lament. It's, it's not a word I use very, very often, but, but lament, that, that we would w lament. L lament basically means this. It means that we would cry out to God. 
It, it, it's, it's this process of crying out to God. Did you know uh, the Psalms, the Psalms, is, it's a collection of songs, 150 songs that are put together in a book, and, and there's different types. Some of the songs are, are praises, but a third of them, a third of the songs are, are songs of laments. And, and, and I've never really heard anybody teach about lament. I, I, I haven't heard anybody kind of walk me through how to grieve when I've, I'm having um, things that I'm losing in life or missing out on in, in life. And, and David walks us through this. A few weeks ago, I was able to attend a, actually be a part of a conference um, uh, here at, at our Toller campus, uh, Stonewater Toller. And uh, at, we, we hosted a conference for small church pastors and small church pastors came in from, from Texas and Oklahoma. And uh, one of the, uh, the pastors that was at the conference shared, and, and a lot of what I'm sharing today is straight from his message. Um, and it was a message that he lived out. It was a message about lamenting or grieving. And his story was this, a year ago, you're, get this, he, he's a pastor. A year ago, his daughter, his daughter took her own life. And, and he's, he spent the, this past year just grieving. And, and, and she took her own life in a very horrible way. I'm not, I'm not even going to say how she did it but, but it, but it was horrible. And he spent this whole year just grieving, just lamenting, just crying out to God. Now, one of the things that, that I realize in life, we're, we're not promised that life is going to easy, going to be easy. Matter of fact, Jesus promised that life, we're going to have trouble. And, and if we're going to have trouble and we're going to have hardship, then we have to learn how to deal with it, how to give the Lord our emotions, how to lament. Because here's what, here's what happens in life. In, in life, uh, as a follower of Jesus, as a follower of God, here's what we believe and know to be true about God. We know that God is the God of comfort. We know that God is the God of peace. We know that God is the God of security. He's our rock of security. But we also know that as we go through difficult times, we often don't feel that God is secure. We don't feel that we're peaceful. We, we don't feel joy. We don't, we don't feel all of the things that God is. What, we feel anger. We, feel, we have fear. We have uncertainty. We experience loss. Like, like this is what we feel, even though this is what we know to be true about God. When we lament, lament does this. It takes us on this process of having our feelings catch up with the truth about who God is. So, so today, I want to share four steps. One, two, three, four Four steps that will take us through this process, these steps to lament. The first one is this, is that we have to turn to God. Our first step is, is that, that we take what we're dealing with and we turn to God and we cry out. Um, it says this in Psalm 62, 8. It says, oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Whenever we go through difficult times, we can either do one of two things. We can either turn towards God or we can turn away from God. When we turn away from God, that's called rebellion. When we turn towards God, it's called relationship. God desires relationship with us. And relationship always looks like turning toward. And God tells us in Psalm 62, 8, that, that we can trust him at all times, that we can pour out our heart to him. Let, let me speak to you in Texan. Let me speak to you in man Texas language. This means that, that we can give God both barrels, like, like share God, share everything with God, that, that, that whatever it is that's going on in our life, that we turn towards God, that we cry out, that we pour out and give him everything everything. That's step one. Step two is, is, is right in line with step one. And step two is this, is that we complain to God, that we make our complaint to God. We turn towards God. We take a step and cry out. Then we complain. We make our complaint to God. Now, I can already hear you. 
Like you're thinking in yourself, like, like complain to God. Can I do that? Yes, you can do that. God can handle it. As a matter of fact, if you think about this, God desires relationship. There's no one in my life that I'm closer to in relationship than my wife. My wife, and I, like, she, I love her more than anybody in this world. Uh, sorry, kids, I love you guys, but mom's on a whole nother level. And, 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 and my wife, she has total freedom to make complaints to me, especially if they're against me. As a matter of fact, when she turns towards me and she complains or makes a complaint to me, it brings us in relationship. We engage in relationship. But if she were to do the opposite, if she were to turn away and complain to others, and, and, and to, to talk about me to others, then, then guess what? That, that betrays the relationship. It, it, instead of bringing us close in relationship, it pushes us away in relationship. And, 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 and God, excuse me, God, God desires that, that we would be close in relationship. God can handle it. It's our big idea. Psalm 55, 22 says this, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. God can handle it. God desires relationship. So first step, we turn towards God. We cry out. Second step, we make a complaint. Third step, we ask God for what we need. We ask God for what we need. Like we, we, we pray and we ask God for what we need. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. Has anybody been worried this week? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. God, God is our provider. This passage tells us that, that all of our needs are like, like we, we give God, like we, we, we complain, we share, we ask God for all that we need. And the passage tells us that, that in times of hardship, when we need something, we're, we're really only doing one of two things. We're either worrying or we're praying. That's our only two options. When we have a need in our life, we can either worry about that need or we can ask God. It, it, scripture says to tell God what you need. That, that's our only two options. Now, I want to make a confession about Stonewater Church. If you're watching for the first time and you don't know Stonewater Church at all, uh, I'm about to air some of our dirty laundry, okay? So here it is. I, I give us about a B minus when it comes to prayer. We're just, we're, we're just we're maybe a little above average, but we're not great when it comes to prayer. And, and that's because of me. Like, like that's because of, of my leadership. Like, like I, I've got to become better at, at prayer. Worry? Man, I'm like a solid A. Uh, I could be like a 92, 93 on, on worry, B minus on prayer, but, but A when it comes to worry. So, so here's, here's the thing I've been wrestling with is during this time, what if, what if my grade for worry was lowered and my grade for prayer was raised? Like, church, let, let's become great during times of hardship, during times of uncertainty of, at prayer. You know, this week at every one of our campuses, and, and we have campus in Granbury and Glen Rose and Toller and, and, and Cleburne. We're about to launch a campus in Godly at every one of our campuses. This week on Wednesday of this week, Wednesday, from noon to one, we're going to have a drive through prayer. That's right. I want to encourage you, if you're anywhere around any of our campuses between noon and one on Wednesday, I want to encourage you to come, and, and we want to pray for you. We're going to have pastors at every one of the campuses, and here's what it'll look like. You'll, you'll drive your car up, and we'll have different lanes here in Granbury that you can drive through, um, and, and you drive, and, and you can roll your window down, and, and we'll be six feet apart from you, so we'll be, we'll be, we'll be separated, and you can roll your window down, or, or if you just want to crack it, you can crack it, or if you want to hold up a sign, you can do that, but but we want to pray for you that, that during this time, we would spend time in prayer. So 
so, so think about this. Here's the picture. We turn towards God. We cry out. We, we make our complaint to God. We, we ask God for, for what we need. And the last step that gets us home is this, is that we would trust and pray. That we would trust and, and praise. Praise. In, in other words, that, that, that by faith, I may not even feel but, but by faith, I trust God that you're good. By faith, I trust God that you're going to bring salvation. And I'm going to praise you for it. By faith, I'm going to trust God that you're going to bring joy in my life. By faith, I'm going to trust and praise you, God, for peace in a turbulent time. L- listen to another passage in Philippians. Philippians 4.9 It says, And this same God who takes care of me, will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. The the fourth step just takes us to a place of understanding and trusting that God is God and he's in control and it's God that supplies all of our needs. So, So when we lament, we're walking through these steps. This is how I feel to this is what I know, and this is what I trust. Now, looking at Psalm 13, I just want us to see this pattern. Psalm 13, David starts over here. What is he feeling? Psalm 13, verse 1, it says, O Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look the other way? Listen to that. What is he doing? He's crying out to God, turning towards God. Verse 2, how long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? So he's turning towards God. He's making his complaint to God. Now look at the third step. Here here he is. He's, He's starting to ask, turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying, we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. That's his ask. That's what he's saying. He's he's asking God. He's telling God what he needs. And then look, look at the final step. Final step is a step of trust and praise. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord, because he is good to me. He's standing firm in his trust. He he walked through every step, and every step of lament was a step of worship to get to a place where he's standing on the faith that he has. You know, what's interesting about this process of lamenting, it's also the process that takes us to be at home in a relationship with God. Maybe today you feel this. You feel just separated from God. You feel disconnected from God. Maybe when I talk about relationship, that God desires relationship with you, that may be the first time you've ever heard that. We'll know that. God is a personal God that desires relationship with you. And the way that we find a relationship with God is through Jesus that we turn to and we cry out. And our complaint that we make is really more of a complaint against ourselves of saying, God, I've been through hardship in life, and God, I haven't responded in a way that honors you. That's called sin, that that we confess and and make that complaint to God. And then we ask God, God, I, I want relationship with you. Jesus, come into my life so that I can uh, experience the presence of God so, so that I can walk with you through life. And the last one is, is by faith we, we place ourselves completely in him. And, and our worship, our worship is, is our lifestyle. In other words, we, we don't live back there. We, we live worshiping and trusting God by faith every day. We're going to wrap up now this message. And as I do, um, I want to challenge you to respond. Joey and I started out the, the service today by, by saying that God wants you to respond. And, and I'm going to ask you to respond. Uh, and and here's, here's my response. The band's going to come out in just a moment. And they're going to they're play. 
a song. And, and as they, they, they sing this song, I want to challenge you to be in prayer. And, and in prayer, prayer is just talking to God. Now, I'm going to give you the prayer to pray. It's, it's basically two things. The first one is this. God, my complaint is that I feel, and you fill in the blank. God, my complaint is that I feel angry. That you would pray that during our time of, of, of song. God, my complaint is that I feel scared. God, my complaint is that I feel frustrated. God, my complaint. You fill in the blank with whatever that emotion is that you're experiencing with your corona story. Maybe your complaint is, God, I feel separated. So, so the first is, is your complaint. The second is a prayer of, Lord Jesus, I ask that you give me and then ask God. Lord Jesus, I ask you that you give me peace. Lord Jesus, I ask that you give me joy. Lord Jesus, I ask that you give me security. Lord Jesus, I ask for some of you maybe salvation or relationship. So, so during our time of, of song, I encourage you to answer those. What's your complaint? And use it as a prayer to God. What's your ask? What are you asking God for during this time? If you're at home, or if you're driving, <laughs> or maybe you're a prepper inside your bunker, like, like, I don't know, but wherever you are, like, use this time to simply just respond in prayer to God. Say, God, here's my complaint. God, here's what I need from you. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today, and Lord, we just thank you that, Father, you teach us through your word how to walk and how to deal with these emotions in a healthy way. In a way that brings us into relationship, not in a way that pushes us to rebellion. And Lord Jesus, I pray that today, Lord, across all of our counties in Texas, and if there's people in Oklahoma listening, I pray for them too. Lord, I pray that you would, you would just make yourself known. That you, Lord, you just speak and say, hey, I'm here. I want relationship with you. And if you would, during this time, just turn towards God in prayer. And if you're sitting at your house at home with your family, maybe everybody just kind of looks at each other and says, okay, we're, we're going to pray. What, what's your complaint? Dads, I encourage you to lead out in this. What's your complaint, kids? And share. Share that. And then follow up with your ask. What are you asking for? What do you need from God? And then stand on that. Know that God is good. Trust that he wants and desires relationship during this time. Lord Jesus, thank you. And Lord, as we continue in worship, Lord, allow us to respond to you. And Lord, take us from, um, Lord, whatever it is we're feeling and allow our emotions to catch up with who you truly are. Lord, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Hey, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for coming and being part of our church today. And uh, Pastor Jeremy, he mentioned that, uh, that we really need to respond. So make sure as a family and in your community group, you talk about ways in which we are just crying out to God and asking him to come and do things in our life. So make sure you continue that throughout the week. Hey, I've got a good friend of mine. This is uh, Stephanie Kirk, and she is in charge of all of our kids' ministry here all throughout our church. Now, Stephanie, you guys have done a great job. My daughter, Lila, just loves kids' ministry, and I don't know how many times we've sang the church clap song in our house, but thank y'all so much for all that you guys are doing. But how do our kids stay connected during this time? What are we doing for kids' ministry? That's right. Hey, moms and dads, we know that your kids love Stonewater Kids on Sunday morning, and we don't want them to miss a thing. We have provided a special service just for kids. Go to stonewaterchurch.com, click on Kids Service, and you will find activities, videos, Bible story teaching, and worship just for your kids. 
Well, we're definitely going to do that. So, but make sure you're, as a family, you stay connected to each other. Make sure you use all of these resources. Again, I just want to point your, your attention to stonewaterchurch.com. That's going to be the best place to find all the information that you're going to need, especially if you need help this week. So there's really four things there at the bottom. You just scroll down. If you need help, or also if you want to help, if you want to serve, find ways in which to serve, you can do that. There's another thing on there to connect. If you're lonely, if you're out there and you need somebody to pray for you, encourage you, there's a button there for you to get connected. And then the fourth thing there is it, it shows you how to give. Many people want to help financially during this time. Pastor Jeremy talked about being a very generous church. And so let's do these things. So if you want to give financially, you will find that there on the website. So throughout the week, we give weekly updates, uh, all of our ministries. It's found on Facebook primarily. Make sure you like it, you laugh at it, you love it, you do all of those things. But let's get the word out about what God is doing and continue to share stories of God's goodness. Hey, as we conclude today, I want to read this passage in, in Numbers chapter 6. It's God's blessing over us, and I want to read this to us as a church. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Peace. 